Rome became a sea power out of necessity. When it became too fat and greedy to live off only the Apennine Peninsula, the Republic had to start looking out for war opportunities elsewhere. The problem was that all of this elsewhere was separated from Rome by water. The smallest distance they had to cover over water was to Sicily. No wonder that soon our main star civilization ran into Carthage, which, on the contrary to Rome, was not a land power. Instead, the people who called themselves Carthaginians were truly descendant from Phoenicians, folk who lived in the lands of the future province of Judea. In order to get to North Africa, where the heart of their empire was now located, they had to sail. And boy oh boy, they could sail good. In fact, mostly thanks to sailing, just before the eruption of the First Punic War, the empire stretched all the way from Cyrenaica to Hispania, but also incorporated parts of Sardinia and Corsica, whole of Balearic Islands, or how I like to call them the Slingers Islands, and quite a bit of Sicily. With all this exploring came warfare, and it gave rise to the jewel of the Carthaginian army, its navy. Anyone who at least heard about the Odyssey, or played that other Odyssey, knows that sailing around the ancient Mediterranean was no peaceful affair. Constant struggle at sea transformed the Carthaginians into masters of the watery battlefield. On top of that, you must know that ancient naval warfare was hard and brutal. Let me quickly explain. For war at sea, ancients basically built these long, not very sturdy rowing vessels without any keel. However, at their bows, they equipped them with rams. Yes, rams. In principle, in order to win, you had to coordinate at minimum 50 rowers, at least this many were needed to man some of the smallest war vessels, aim at an enemy side, and ram their ship at an adequate speed. You could not go full speed, as it would make the ships jam and sink together. After ramming, there was always time needed to row away. Perfecting this maneuver required months, if not years, of practice and experience. At the beginning of the First Punic War, the Romans were at a disadvantage. They never really fought at sea. There was no Roman navy. Polybius describes this situation best. Greeks talk a whole pile of nonsense. No, not this time, Verenus. Let's hear Polybius. It was not that they had fairly good resources for it, but they had none whatever, nor had they ever given a thought to the sea. Yet, when they once had conceived the project, they took it in hand so boldly that before gaining any experience in the matter, they at once engaged the Carthaginians who had held for generations undisputed command of the sea. Moreover, Romans did not really plan to fight with Carthage at the time. Plundering prospects in Greece seemed much more promising, rather than in a country where they sacrificed children and used open olive lamps. Ugh, absolutely barbaric. Gods had similar thoughts. First they wanted Romans to deal with the nuisance from Africa. However, in all their ungratefulness, gods only gave Romans a crushed Carthaginian ship from which they had to backwards engineer their vessels. Ad hoc built Roman navies, led by bold but unexperienced seafarers, got crushed in a few engagements. The most humiliating one was near Lepara, north of Sicily, where Carthaginians ambushed a detachment of a Roman navy led by a consul, which was trying to seize the strategically located island. The consul was captured. As a result, Romans, in their shipwright workshops, started asking themselves, In war, what are we good at? Land battles. In war, what are we bad at? Sea battles. Okay. Now, how do we turn the sea battles into land battles? The answer? Corvus. What? There was nothing more complicated than a long platform with low railing, equipped with a skewer at an end. It was mounted at the front of a ship and could be rotated from side to side if need be. When an enemy vessel got close, the corvus was suddenly dropped, immobilizing it, thanks to the aforementioned skewer. This allowed Romans to unleash their weapon of mass destruction. Legionaries. As I like to say, sometimes the easiest solutions are the easiest. The first battle in which corvi were used was fought in 260 BCE near Mylae and turned out to be a great victory for the Republic. Although they had less ships, they surprised Carthaginians with their new toys, resulting in 50 Punic ships being captured. The corvus turned out to be useful again and again, helping the Romans win a few more sea battles. In the end, this simple invention helped immensely in decreasing Punic navy to a pitiful state. In fact, at one point during the war, it was the Carthaginians who had to build a new fleet from scratch and man it with novices, making Romans the more experienced at sea and able to defeat Carthage in a more traditional way, outmaneuvering and ramming. Let me just add one private remark. When making this video I learned that during 20 odd years of the First Punic War, only two pitched battles were fought, which made the Corvus and its importance grow in my eyes even further. Thank you for watching. And remember, Roma caput mundi.